During the search for scientific advancements, sometimes risks need to be taken, some larger than others. Every developed nation is constantly trying to push the boundaries of scientific exploration. And while often that can lead to discoveries that can help millions of people, sometimes those same millions were close to death and didn't even know it. And some of those experiments are still ongoing today. Here are 10 experiments that almost killed millions. Number one is Starfish Prime. Starfish Prime was the code name for a high-altitude nuclear bomb test that the United States Military and Atomic Energy Commission conducted on July 9, 1962. During the experiment, a 1.4 megaton nuclear warhead was launched over the Pacific Ocean, reaching over 249 miles above sea level before it was detonated in space. The resulting explosion caused an unexpected massive electromagnetic pulse that hit the Hawaiian Islands, which was almost 900 miles away. The pulse damaged phone lines and knocked out over 300 streetlights across the state. But more importantly, the nuke damaged the Earth's magnetic field, which protects us all from solar winds and radiation waves. Radiation from the bomb itself settled and created a ring around the Earth that severely damaged and interfered with a number of satellites floating around it for the next five years. If it had destroyed or severely altered the magnetic field any further, it could have caused countless deaths from the harmful radiation of space. Number two are tectonic weapons. While the United States were trying to blow a big hole in the sky, a bunch of Russian military scientists were hard at work, focusing their nuclear exploding capabilities a little closer to home, or rather, right under home. They began testing underground with their new inventions called tectonic weapons. These bombs were supposedly tested in several programs between 1987 and 1992, codenamed Mercury and Volcano. The aim of these tests were to manipulate the electromagnetism of the Earth's tectonic plates. Theoretically, this meant that they could cause earthquakes at will, a truly devastating weapon if perfected. In other words, the enemy would not have even known that they were attacked. Essentially, it would have looked just like a natural disaster. It doesn't need to be explained why exploding nukes underground would be bad for everyone, considering the release of radiation as well as the impact of messing with the tectonic plates that we all live on top of. However, luckily, according to Russia, the idea was cancelled, although there are whispers that it was only postponed. Number three is the Kola Superdeep Borehole. The Kola Superdeep Borehole was the brainchild of Soviet scientists who wanted to drill as far down into the Earth's crust as they possibly could. The project began in the Kola District of the Soviet Union on May 24, 1970 and halted in 1992 due to an inability to drill deeper through the ground temperatures of up to 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Though the hole was only 9 inches wide and reached 7.5 miles into the ground, some researchers thought it may have had a major impact on the tectonic plates around it. Hypothetically, burrowing so deep into the crust could cause a release of pressure that built up under miles of salt. Solid rock. This pressure had the potential to cause a shift in the tectonic plates, causing a massive earthquake or even worse, mass volcanic eruptions. Number four are bubonic plague weapons. The bubonic plague or black plague has literally plagued the earth for centuries, killing millions upon millions of people. During the Cold War, Russia was placed in a pretty damaging situation when their top secret project to utilize the plague as a means of attack was brought to light. One of their top biologists, Vladimir Pashnik, defected to the United Kingdom in 1989 and brought the secrets of the Soviet biological warfare research programs with him. Not only were the Russians using the plague, they made it resistant to antibiotics and developed a warhead for it to be launched into enemy territory. If this biological weaponry had ever been actually used, it could have wiped out more than half the population of the Earth 
just like it did back in the 14th century. Number five is the Trinity nuclear test. Trinity was the code name for the very first nuclear bomb test explosion that occurred on July 16, 1945 in the Jornada del Muerto Desert just outside of Socorro, New Mexico. Since a nuclear bomb had never been tested before, there were many theories as just to what would happen. Two scientists who worked on the bomb, Enrico Fermi and Edward Teller, theorized that the bomb's explosion would cause an explosive reaction within the nitrogen in the Earth's atmosphere. This reaction would literally set the air on fire and could destroy pretty much everything on the planet. In a move that was actually a precursor to switching on the Hadron Collider, in order to find out if they were correct or not, they simply just detonated the bomb. They literally experimented using a pass or fail result to determine if it would have destroyed all life on Earth. Lucky for us, this did not happen. Number six is Project SEAL. It turns out even the Kiwis have contributed to the creation of weapons of mass destruction. While the United States of America was busy creating the atomic bomb during World War II, New Zealand was working on their own devastating weapon that could have let them harness the power of water. Project SEAL was the code name for the small country's experiments into weaponizing the ocean itself. Backed by the US, the goal was to use high yield explosives underwater to create giant tsunamis capable of destroying ships and submarines and basically obliterating any coastal towns and bases of the target country. Between 1944 and 1945, New Zealand detonated around 3,700 bombs underwater in tests to create a tsunami. The bomb tests were unsuccessful in pushing the explosive force in a horizontal manner and failed to create any actual tsunamis. However, had New Zealand succeeded in these experiments, it would have revolutionized weapons of mass destruction. Number seven is oil eating bacteria. Oil spills are devastating to the environment, affecting not only sea life, but in a way, all life on this planet. Entire ecosystems have fallen to toxic oil being introduced into them. But what happens when the solution to the problem winds up doing nearly just as much damage? In 1971, American microbiologist Professor Ananda Mohan Chakrabarti genetically engineered a form of bacteria that could consume oil faster than any other bacteria before it. This scientific breakthrough was patented and hailed as a new and efficient method of cleaning up oil spills. However, concerns were raised about just how powerful and efficient this new super bacteria was. The oil eating species it was engineered from would tend to compete with each other rather than constantly consuming the oil, which led to less efficiency. The new super bacteria had the best traits of all these bacteria, and it came to light that it would outcompete any other bacteria that it came into contact with. Like evil little nanomachines, its introduction could have brought about the collapse of entire ecosystems, which in turn could drastically alter life as we know it and even end the lives of many species, potentially even humans. Number eight is the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider, an underground 17 mile long particle accelerator located between France and Switzerland, was used in 2012 to discover the Higgs boson particle. The Higgs boson, or the God particle, is an elusive particle that gives objects their mass. In order to find it, scientists use the LHC to accelerate particles and crash them together at the speed of light. In doing so, they created a tiny but extremely powerful powerful surge of energy, which some believe could spawn some super dark alternate discoveries. Theories in this category include accidentally creating a black hole that devours the entire planet, or the creation of a strange matter particle that could almost instantly convert the entire mass of the Earth into a hot ball of death. Though an executive committee decided that the risk was minimal due to similar events happening naturally in the universe, there was no way of being certain of the experiment's safety. Number nine is weaponized fungus. 
Rice crops are a critical food supply when you consider that they feed not only armies, but hundreds of millions of citizens worldwide every day. A certain fungus called Magnaporth griseia infects and kills rice crops, causing some pretty dire issues in the countries that depend on them the most. The fungus spreads itself by releasing thousands of tiny spores from infected plants and has devastated rice crops in 85 countries, including the United States. America has in the past toyed with a spray-on version of the fungus in preparation for any scenario in which they would possibly want to starve their enemies. And not only that, but the fungus affects essential crops like wheat, barley, and rye. So ultimately, they would have probably starved everyone that depends on bread. Let's be thankful that they never used it. And number 10 is the quantum xeno effect. This next experiment is actually still ongoing, which is pretty scary and can be pretty tricky to understand since it involves quantum mechanics. If you've ever heard the expression, a watched pot never boils, that pretty much essentially sums up the Zeno effect, or the Turing paradox as it's called. Continuously observing or measuring particles causes them to never change, like they're in a never-ending loop as long as you're looking at them. One theory by Professor Lawrence Krauss states that observing dark matter in space actually causes it to decay faster. Dark matter is what makes up 84.5% of the entire universe, and scientists have been extremely curious about it ever since the 1990s. Apparently, if we observe it long enough, it can actually become unstable and collapse, causing a chain reaction that would bring about the end of the universe. So, those were 10 experiments that almost killed millions of people. But I want to know from you, do you think that we will one day accidentally cause an accident from this research? Leave your comments below because I'll be looking through them and I'm going to pin the best one to the top. But as always, thank you very much for coming by today. Remember to come back tomorrow and every weekday at exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a brand new video for you. I'll see you then.